Time for tonight's reality check. Thanks to recent leaks by the single most powerful group in Washington, a collection of people we call unnamed sources, Jared Kushner has become the latest figure in the Trump administration accused of being a Russian collaborator. Jared Kushner and Russia's ambassador to Washington discussed the possibility of setting up a secret and secure communications channel between Trump's transition team and the Kremlin. This idea of a back channel that some people say, frankly, is un-American. Jared Kushner, he's going to uh, remain, he's going to uh, keep his head down as he does, but this raises more questions about him and they don't know how to answer them. Jared's actually become much more famous than me. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little bit upset about that. <laughs> Well, it's just un-American. Fox senior political analyst Britt Hume tells us this story actually, to borrow a phrase from Hillary Clinton, may be a nothing burger. He joins us in the studio tonight. Britt, there's less here than meets the eye? Well, some months ago, around February the 10th to be exact, the Washington Post published a story about Jared Kushner and his diplomatic undertakings in which they discussed, particularly as regards Mexico, uh, his, he had opened a channel to Mexico, a back channel indeed was discussed in the article, and it talked about how helpful he was being to the Trump administration, how he was known and trusted by a number of foreign leaders and that he was kind of the foreign policy guy in the story but it was all very favorable to Kushner so later on we find out uh, in this subsequent story that yes indeed the activities extended although they never made mention of the earlier favorable story in the Washington Post that he had discussed with the Russian ambassador, who is very much, it should be noted, a man about town who has consultations and conversations with officials at many levels, and, his, and the Washington ambassador in Washington, for the longest, as long as I can remember, has always been very much a well-known man about town that everybody saw, and, and, yeah. and, and you know, he wasn't considered, um, and he is, you know, he is what he is. He's basically a diplomat. Um, now he may be also feeding everything he can back to Moscow. No one would doubt that for a moment, but, but he's never really been thought of as a major foreign agent because he's right out there in the open. Right. So discussions with him would seem to me to be pretty much regular business. So there was apparently a conversation about the need to establish some kind of a back channel, which never came to pass. So basically what we're doing, we're having here is a discussion with some surprise, you know, a, a story acting surprised and perhaps shocked uh, about something that Jared Kushner had been doing with other leaders and which he didn't do with Russia. And, well, that's, I and that's the sum and substance of it. And you hear that for John King, who's a good reporter, to say that it's almost un-American, seems to me to be bizarre. Back channels have been used diplomatically going back forever. Go back to the, the days of Henry Kissinger and the setting up of the, of the opening to China and all that. There are all kinds of back channel of communications. It's not at all uncommon, and certainly not uncommon for White Houses, which sometimes want to work around the diplomats in the State Department. And who would mind uh, that there were some channels that could be thought leak-proof in this environment? Well, that's the un-American part of it, is that apparently Jared Kushner was so worried about our government's own intel agencies leaking the content of his conversation, he right. sought a, a separate means. Those intel agencies took that conversation, spied on them talking, and leaked the contents. Well, so it turned, apparently so. But what I guess what bothers me is it's all implication. If you're going to leak something about somebody, tell us what the crime is. Tell us what they did. Be explicit. This is all, well, you met with this person. It's, it's McCarthyite. You know, if, Tucker, we may have discussed this before, but if you and I sat down and tried to design someone who would be absolutely detested by the nation's news media, we could not, we could not do better than Donald Trump. He's everything news media people uh, don't like. He's rich. He's brash. He's inexperienced. He's, at least in terms of the agenda that he's adopted, he's pretty conservative. He's all of these things. And, and I think that, he, you know, the stuff that he does and says, particularly the things he says, make him a pretty target-rich environment. If reporters want to resist this man with honest reporting, they don't need to go into this kind of stuff. They just ought to report what he says and does. It just seems to me the effects of this story in particular, which is why I'm so focused on it, are potentially much bigger than your average political story. Russia is a real country with a lot of nuclear weapons and a major player in a lot of world events. And so to distort our foreign policy in the service of a political aim like hurting Trump seems really reckless to me. Well, look, it's certainly true that Russia is a nation we need to do a lot of business with. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, and it would be nice if we could have improved relations with Russia. Vladimir Putin does not make that easy. And 
you know, the Russians clearly attempted to meddle in the election. I suspect they've tried to meddle in many an election before this, and will try again. It's the kind of thing the Russians do. Uh, whether it was decisive in any sense in this election is a very much an open question, and the evidence of that is extremely thin, it seems to me. Um, at the same time, I think, you know, it's, you, you would not want it to be the case that uh, we'd cooked up ahead of time uh, a plan to go soft on Russia. You know, we might have, as if to say, we'll have more flexibility after the election. Wouldn't right. that have been a terrible thing to say? <laughs> I can't imagine anybody I wish about, we had about, the sound about, to take, about to take office saying a thing like that. On an open mic. Britt, thanks a million for you that. You bet, Tucker.